Hey, what's up all you miraculous people out there? I'm Dudes Disden and I'm coming at you with the Miraculous Ladybug 60 Minute Special. This is the TV movie titled Miraculous World, New York. And the undertitle of this is United Heroes. Heroes with a Z, because core literacy is cool. And this was a very interesting special that actually did show us that outside of the world of Paris, outside of the world of Miraculous Ladybug, there are even more heroes out there trying their best to save the world day to day. Let's jump into it. As we have this beautifully done opening title shot with us finally seeing you know in all its glory fully rendered in probably the best rendering quality we've seen to date marinette ladybug holding her miraculous box with it just shining and us seeing that based in new york there is also a miraculous box Mmm, very interesting. But aside from that, let's jump into the special proper. As we see that Mr. Pigeon, of all things, has actually stolen this priceless book from um, the top of the Eiffel Tower. And he's using his pigeons to try to escape from the planet as he feels that he has been uh, underpresented on Earth. You know, that he's not getting his due, now, like he's not welcome, like he's an outsider. Naturally, Ladybug and Captain Noir are hot on his heels, and we see the debut of Astro Bug and... What was the name? Astro... No, Cosmo Bug and Astro Cat. That was Ladybug and Cat Noir's uh, space flying suits. Very cool. So they managed to get the book back, return it to the top of the Eiffel Tower, and we see the new status quo established at the end of Season 3. Namely... Cat Noir trying to be more of a friend to Ladybug, while still giving her flowers and all that stuff, he's emphasizing friendship. Because at the end of last season, go see my previous review of Ladybug, they kind of went their separate directions. Adrian is moved on towards Kagami, and Marinette is moving on towards Luca, though they still have lingering emotions towards each other. As we see that Marinette still kind of gets woozy and swooning at pictures of Adrian, much to the annoyance of Tiki, who's just like, didn't you say you were moving on from that? But she still wants it for her own personal reasons. We also get to see that because the kids of Marinette's class made this small student film for the French US relationship day kind of whatever that's going on. Both basically the bonds between Fr the French and the US. Yeah, we have the Statue of Liberty and they helped us out in a lot of ways. We owe a lot to the French even though we don't really put it out there. Because of this, the class will be heading to New York because of everything that's happened and just to show good relations. However, Miss Boussier will not be attending as we come to find out she is in fact pregnant. Holy crap. Yo, like Man, I wasn't expecting that one. And unfortunately, she will not be attending because she has to go in for checkups and all that. So everything has been left in the hands of Miss Mendeleev, who the kids are none too keen on having go with them. Now, I heard originally she was supposed to have a bigger story arc in this. Unfortunately, it ended up being cut for time. Um... Adrian says he probably won't be able to go because of his dad, and naturally, Lyra is all too keen on just coming in and, you know, Lila, I don't know what I said, Lyra. Lila is trying to move in and say, oh, I'm staying behind too, so maybe we can spend some time together. Naturally, Marinette is none too keen on that and speaks up saying that she will take everyone, march down to uh, Adrian's dad, Gabriel, and get convince him to let Adrian go. 
much to the cheers of everyone because she's just like oh because adrian is my friend and my friend won't be left behind everyone kind of questions this later in the fact that is like what what do you mean friend just a friend but Marinette is determined to play this off and just treat Adrian like a friend. Meanwhile, there's an exhibit going on at the at the museum that the kids will be visiting when they're over in New York. And one of the artifacts is actually the Eagle Miraculous, as noted by Natalie, since she has the book with the various translations from Master Fu. Um, however, this ends up being interrupted as all of the kids have arrived, but Gabriel uses this as an opportunity to let Adrian just go, because with Adrian out of the house, he won't question why Gabriel seems to be away. Meanwhile, he'll be on his way to New York as well to retrieve the Eagle Miraculous. You know, it's all coming together. We also kind of see that Natalie seems kind of bedridden for the most part so i wonder if this is the effects of the peacock miraculous because we never see her leave the bed meanwhile adrian is feeling pretty down on the fact that he won't be able to attend going to new york with all of his friends but kagami tries her best to cheer him up and we see that their relationship has continued to get closer and closer so, Ladybug ends up telling Cat Noir that she'll be leaving out of town, and she leaves him with a device that'll allow him to contact her should some kind of evil force arise. So, Gabriel goes about telling Adrian that he can go to New York, but Adrian's feeling like, maybe I shouldn't go. You know, Paris was left in the hands of me by Ladybug. It would be irresponsible to go. But Plague ultimately convinces him. And with a little help from Luca, Marinette's able to catch up with the bus the next day. With Luca having faith that hopefully Marinette will gain some clarity on this trip. Because while he does want to be her number one, he would rather her ultimately choose with a clear head. So... Marinette gets on board the bus and she sees that Adrian will be able to go on the trip. However, on the flight, Marinette's a little put off by the fact that Adrian is sitting right next to her. She just can't keep it together. And they actually do end up sharing a nice moment watching the sunset. Well, sunrise, I think it was. I'm having a hard time remembering. I think it was Sunrise. They watched the sunrise from the plane, and Adrian is very thankful to Marinette for convincing his father to let him go. Meanwhile, Alia and Nino hatch a plan to get the two closer together, so that way Adrian could come out of a shell more, and Marinette can be a little bit more true to her feelings. However, this is interrupted when their plane is attacked by the Techno Pirate, an American villain called, whose real name is Mike Rochip. Hmm, really going with that one, huh? And he has a tendency to want to steal, you know, technology wherever he can find it. And it seems that he's on a bit of a run trying to get out of here. However... As he rips off one of the plane's jets, we see that a hero has come to the plane's aid, namely Uncanny, the first android superhero, I guess you could call it, who was made by Miss Majestic. I think it's just Majestic. I think her name's just Majestic. So, Miss, but we actually have seen this character before. She was actually introduced in the in one of the episodes as one of Alia's favorite superheroes. You know, she, you know, whereas Ladybug, I guess you could say, is Alia's favorite French superhero. Majestic is Alia's favorite American superhero. And she just completely geeks out over all of this. Meanwhile, Techno Pirate tries his best to get away, only to be confronted by Night Owl, who is Mr. Damocles' favorite superhero, who I didn't realize was an actual superhero in this universe, as well as 
at Night Owl's sidekick, Sparrow, who is actually originally supposed to be included in the superhero team of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Back in the prototype days, Sparrow was an ally and a regular reoccurring, you know, ally for justice in their fight to save Paris. But... We, we're actually kind of seeing a bit of an adaption to an old concept of the team-up between the French heroes and the American heroes as well. Because a lot of these characters were incorporated into this comic book that was made for the Ladybug and Cat Noir comic book series. Where they ended up going to America, meeting up with a lot of these heroes, and fighting off a villain called the Trash Kraken. But Techno Pirate little bit of a step up from a trash kraken so they managed to subdue techno pirate and save the plane land it safely and put techno pirate away meanwhile Ali is determined to get marinette to be a little bit more open and nino does the same for adrian meanwhile we also see that sparrow is keeping an eye on the french tourists to keep them safe and we see the, the civilian disguises of um, Uncanny and Sparrow, who are um, Aeon and Jessica, respectively. You know, originally, in the original concept, Sparrow was a guy. But here, they've decided to change it up, making Sparrow a girl. That's because in the comic, Night Owl was revealed to be a woman. And I guess they're playing off of that by going, taking it a step further and having Night Owl sidekick be a female as well, which is nice. Not to mention she seems to have Native American roots, although she has the classic Native American girl design. If you ever, if you ever need to see it again, see Danny Moonstar from the New Mutants. She looks just like her. But they're just there to keep an eye on all of the French tourists, who are none too pleased at the fact that Miss Mandalave is very strict on their scheduling and want them in their rooms by nightfall. However, one of the American students who are on a field trip as well say they're having a party up on the roof and invite all of the French students. Meanwhile, we see that Marinette and Alia will be sharing a room with Sabrina and Chloe. Uh, Chloe, who uh, is kind of on my shit list because of the events of the season 3 finale. But all of the kids end up sneaking out with a little help from Jessica and Aeon. And they get to the roof and they have just a fun, good time. They even have the arrival of a... A minor superhero who is Hot Dog Frank? Hot, what was it? Hot Dog Hank. It's Hot Dog something. Hot Dog Dan. Jeez. I would have called him Hot Dog Frank. You know, Frank Furter? He, he has to be the arch nemesis of the Condiment King, though. But Hot Dog Dan has special hot dogs that give you powers when you eat them, and they wear off after a certain point of time. And, you know, Alia and Nino have Marinette and Adrian share a hot dog that allows them to float in the air. And they have a very romantic moment where they dance while floating in the sky. Mmm, that's mighty romantic. However... Marinette is determined to deny this, saying that they are just good friends. We also see the introduction of another superhero, Doorman, who looks nothing like his comic book counterpart, uh, named Dean Gate, and he's an open superhero in this world. He's the... Uh, he's the teacher for the American class who is on this trip. Meanwhile, Nino and Alia end up teaming up with Aeon as well as Jessica. The 
latter two taking a bit of an interest in the relationship going on between Marinette as well as and Adrian because they feel like they would make a cute couple. So Jessica hatches a plan to get them closer together. Meanwhile, we see that Gabriel has arrived in New York and starts to make plans in order to capture the Eagle Miraculous, sending out an Akuma after Techno Pirate in order to turn him into the Technolizer, sending him after the sword of um, the sword in the exhibit in order to throw any heroes off the trail. So as the plan goes into action in order to get Adrian and Marinette closer together, they end up seeing a report from back home where apparently um, Robuscus is on the rampage. However, this can't be Robuscus as Makarov is actually here with Max. So it raises the question of what's going on and where is Cat Noir in all this. Meanwhile, Aeon and Jessica implement their plan and send out this fake baddie, only for the real baddie, Technolizer, to show up to steal the sword. And uh, immediately, Aeon realizes that Technolizer seems to have some magic incorporated into his new skill set. So they suit up as Sparrow and Uncanny and go after the baddie. Meanwhile, Marinette questions what's going on. Where is Cat Noir? Why isn't he protecting Paris from the villain attack? And... Speaking of which, Adrian notes that maybe he should try to make his way back to Paris immediately. Unfortunately, the damage in the ensuing battle between Technolizer, Uncanny, and Sparrow starts to spill out into the civilian crowds, so Doorman suits up and ushers everyone to safety. Unfortunately, Uncanny ends up being captured and her powers adapted, making Technolizer even more dangerous, causing Sparrow to get knocked out. So Marinette considers going after Sparrow to help her, but she ends up endangering herself, so Cat Noir suits up, only to be you know, knocked away by Uncanny taking down Technolizer. So Marinette suits up into Ladybug only to run into Cat Noir, questioning why he's in New York. And as everyone is distracted by Technolizer, Hawk Moth goes after the Eagle Miraculous. So we get a nice little team up with the young heroes of New York teaming up with the young heroes of Paris. And Sparrow is kind of jealous, constantly feeling that they're put on less interesting missions and not giving much to do because the adults seem to be worried about their young charges and feel that despite being young, Ladybug and Cat Noir seem to have everything together. Only for them to be shown that they don't have anything, everything together, as Ladybug is super pissed that Cat Noir didn't stay back in Paris. And as the heroes activate their powers, Cat Noir's uh, Cataclysm and Ladybug's Lucky Charm, you know, she ends up getting a bicycle pump, where she questions what the purpose of this is. But as Technolizer, you know, goes on his rampage, Ladybug continues to comment that she feels that maybe she can't trust Cat Noir anymore because of him not staying behind to help out Paris. This ends up distracting Cat Noir, which gives Technolizer the opening he needs to grab Cat Noir, sending, flinging him into Ladybug, only for Ladybug to be protect, protected by Uncanny. Unfortunately, this greatly damages Uncanny. And because of her abilities, Majestic is able to sense what happened to Uncanny, comes rocketing in, punches away Technolizer, who gets de-akumatized by Hawk Moth, only to be invited into his car. But, you know, because of this, Aeon is greatly damaged, Majestic is devastated, and 
Night Owl shows up super pissed that, first of all, Sparrow didn't contact the heroes when the villain showed up, and he questions why, well, she questions why Cat Noir and Ladybug are here. With Ladybug taking this time to, you know, send out the Ladybugs to help restore Aeon to, you know, better health, basically. Uh, as better health as an android can get. But, Night Owl still demands their miraculous, feeling that their power is too dangerous to be left unchecked. So, he wants, she wants them turned over to her until they leave New York and head back to Paris. However, Ladybug and Cat Noir take this moment to try to escape, not wanting to give up their miraculous and their secret identities. Night Owl tries to give chase, but is unsuccessful in tracking them down. Meanwhile, Ladybug and Cat Noir escape into the sewers, and try to f assess the situation in Paris to make it back, only to find that the Senti monster disappeared before they could get there, meaning that because Ladybug was unable to get to Paris and create a lucky charm in order to deal with the monster, with the lucky charm being the only thing that can repair everything, because because each lucky tar charm we find out is specified to a individual monster. And if that monster is no longer around, Ladybug can't set things to right. Meaning that all that destruction is just going to have to stick. This devastates Ladybug, but even more so Cat Noir, who really judges himself harshly for leaving. But it's just like... Ladybug left as well. She left for her own reasons. She should have been the one to stay in Paris. That's, you know, she's the one who has the ability to undo any form of devastation wrought by a product of Hawk Moth or, you know, whoever. But this ended up not being the case. You know, Cat Noir should have been free to go on this trip. It feels, for me personally, it feels that Ladybug was the selfish one here. But he feels that he is no longer worthy of having the Cat Miraculous, and he gives it up, much to the shock of Marinette. Meanwhile, Gabriel ends up meeting up with the Mirac uh, the Kwame of the Eagle Miraculous, Liru, who tells Gabriel all about his her their powers. You know, Kwamis are normally genderless, so it's hard to tell. But you know, Liru has the ability of freedom, you know, unlocking the potential that anyone has within them as kept by mental barriers and you know, feeling that you shouldn't or you can't. You know, so meanwhile, meanwhile Jessica and Aeon continue to be chewed out by Night Owl and Majestic, who say that, you know, because of what they did, they need to be, you know, grounded, you know, say no more superheroing for a while, you know, we have to go and look for um, Techno Pirate, you stay here and continue to watch the Paris students. Um, unfortunately, we have Adrian just walking home in the rain, devastated, and Marinette's also devastated by everything that has happened. Meanwhile, the President of the United States, who is also a superhero called Victory, dedicates and says that all the festivities will be shut down until they can bring Techno Pirate to justice, and in the meantime, the heroes will will hunt down the fugitive. We then see the fugitive techno pirate in the bathtub of Hawkmoth, which oof, in a lot of other scenes series, this would uh this would be the start to something very gruesome, but Hawkmoth makes a deal with Techno Pirate that he will reaccumatize him and give him the Hawk Miraculous for even more power. Me uh, 
we then cut to Marinette and Adrian arriving back at the dorm, only for Gabriel to have a car pulled up, demanding that Adrian come back home, with him feeling that New York is far too dangerous, which says something when the danger is, in fact, himself. But Adrian ultimately relents, apologizing for leaving and just... You know, he, he he's really just still down on himself. But as Adrian leaves and Marinette kind of lets him, Alia tries to snap Marinette out of her funk and everything that has happened, feeling that if she allows Adrian to leave, it'll be far too late. So Marinette tries to give chase, but it is ultimately in vain. Meanwhile... A uh, techno pirate now going by the name of Miracolonizer. Miracolonizer? Miraculonizer. I can't call him a colonizer. Do not call him a colonizer. That, that's, that's bad. Miraculonizer. Miraculonizer. <sighs> I'm just going to call him techno pirate. Okay? Okay. Techno pirate. You know, gives himself up to the superheroes. However, this is all a ruse, as Techno Pirate uses his, his, the Eagle's power of freedom to strike at all the heroes, unbinding their restraint. Just and they just go crazy. They start just abusing their abilities and powers all over the place, much to the light of Hawk Moth, who sends out an announcement that unless Ladybug and Cat Noir turn themselves over, the whole of New York will be destroyed. So, seeing this, Jessica and Aeon decide that with them being the last ones left, it's up to them to try to take down Hawk Moth. But Aeon says they'll probably have a better chance with Ladybug and Cat Noir, with her saying that she should be able to track them down. So as Sparrow does her best in order to draw off the attentions of all the various heroes who are running amok, Aeon ends up finding Marinette and saying, hey, we need your help. And while Marinette tries to deny it, Aeon is ultimately artificial intelligence and can delete her memory banks once the time comes. So, you know, they get everything ready, but unfortunately, Marinette's still feeling down on herself. While she... You know, should have all she needs in order to take down this akumatized villain. She feels that she can't do it without Cat Noir. So, Uncanny asks for the ring in order to get her partner back. So, she makes her way up to Adrian's plane, where he feels that he's not worthy. But, Uncanny plays the message, or the recording she had, of Marinette saying that she can't do it without Cat Noir. So, Cat Noir ends up joining back into the festivities. And just before Sparrow can be uh, blasted to bits, in a very cool a action scene, with Sparrow running from the various heroes, Sparrow ends up being saved by Ladybug, and they f kind of convene to talk about things with Sparrow saying that the thing that Techno Pirate has around his neck is an artifact from the museum with Ladybug realizing it must be a miraculous and you know after this she reunites with Cat Noir they make up and Techno Pirate takes off with the president's um, pad, control pad, and goes to the Statue of Liberty and sets up a nuclear warhead with Hawk Moth threatening to ignite World War III unless Ladybug and Cat Noir turn over their miraculous. 
Meanwhile, Ladybug formulates a plan on how to get the heroes from under the control of the Techno Pirate. So she brings out another lucky charm. It ends up being a keychain for the Statue of Liberty, keying her in that she has to figure out how to get in there, what the best route is to get in there, which is going up the stairs in the arm. Um, however, when questioned how they're going to get in without being seen, Sparrow and Ladybug realize that the best method would be Doorman. And they formulate a plan using Doorman's, you know, unabashed curiosity where he used to have control. Now he's curious and barges in on anyone and anything. They use that in order to lure him out and lure him over to the Eiffel Tower to grab a key that you know, symbolizes the unity between New York and Paris, and that key opens something within the Statue of Liberty. However, Ladybug ends up capturing him as Sparrow and Uncanny continue to just distract Techno Pirate so Ladybug can just get right on top of him and grab the Eagle Miraculous throwing it to Sparrow, who transforms into Eagle. And Eagle uses her power of calm down, or well, cool down, which, you know, wears off the ability that Techno Pirate unleashed to freedom. And so all the various heroes snap out of their, you know, unabashed freedom. But... Hawk Moth isn't done, and has Techno Pirate threaten to fire the missiles and set off something major. But Ladybug and Cat Noir do not give in to these threats, as that's just not their style. So it ends up, you know. Hawk Moth ends up just firing the warhead anyway. Like, this dude is full-on willing to just start a world war just for the shits and giggles, just because he can. Luckily, it is stopped by Majestic, who, you know, stops the rocket, and Night Owl comes in and helps to take down Techno Pirate by binding him while Cat Noir unleashes his Cataclysm and Ladybug seals away the Akuma. And, you know, Techno Pirate is taken away to jail. Meanwhile, Ladybug congratulates Eagle on a job well done, saying that she deserves to keep the Eagle miraculous because she is the hero that she should be and the hero that New York deserves. And despite the fact that Eagle questions if she's still on punishment, Night Owl says that, no, not at all. You know, they're, they're the fifth incarnation of Night Owl and Sparrow. But because of Sparrow's new outfit, everyone will be able to tell that Sparrow is a woman. And it feels that maybe it's time to move forward and move on. With Night Owl s saying that she misjudged Ladybug and Cat Noir. They were able to just come in, do their thing, and help out fully. In a lot of ways that the heroes couldn't. However, Hawkmoth doesn't take this as a loss. He feels that because of this, he knows that more Miraculous are out there in the world, and he is determined to find them. Who knows what they are, though? And with the day saved, Aeon says goodbye to Cat Noir and Ladybug, saying she will delete her memory bank so that their secrets will remain safe. Paris does his best to recover from the devastation, and... You know, they ultimately see that Ladybug and Cat Noir weren't around because they were off saving New York. So, you know, it was a good show of faith and the unity between America, well, well, yeah, America and France. And with the kids of Adrian's class giving him a nice little message, with Adrian just being a little bit choked up that his friends just care about him so much. 
and we get a nice ending credit scene where um, at Eagle and Uncanny were about to bust some thugs, only to be met by the guardian of the Native American Miracle Box, who demands to have the Eagle Miraculous return. However, Uncanny makes the claim that Eagle has done so much good and is truly deserving of the Miraculous and should be allowed to keep it, with Eagle taking it one step further, saying that the Guardian should join them in helping to select a new breed of heroes to help protect America, with the Guardian actually taking a little bit of an interest in this idea. And that's it. That what a great special. This had a lot of heart, a lot of really passionate moments, some good character action. Like, it, this was really pretty good. I would have actually loved to have seen this as a full on movie. That would have been incredible. But this wasn't bad at all. And I love just seeing the new transformations, as brief as they were. But most of all, seeing the American superheroes. This went a lot, in a much more interesting direction than the comic that originally had Ladybug and Cat Noir meeting up with all these characters. Because, you know, while it wasn't bad... It just wasn't on this level. It didn't have that same kind of oomph. And a lot of things feel very non canon -y in all of that. But hey, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. How did you feel about this special? Did you like it? Did you hate it? How did you feel about the American heroes? I loved seeing Sparrow. Sparrow is this character that even, you know, Jeremy Zag and Thomas Onstruck were very interested in introducing to some capacity, and I'm glad they actually got to do it. Although I am sad that Jessica will not be using that Sparrow outfit anymore, and I hope that maybe we might see another costume don the role of Sparrow, because I just love the outfit, it's just so cool, and, you know, Uncanny was fine, not my favorite, but fine, well, that that's, goes for a lot of superheroes, I just really digged Night Owl and Sparrow, just really fun characters, and I can't wait to see more of them, but until then, I'll just have to wait for the next special, Miraculous Shanghai. Until the next time, feel free to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on another Miraculous Ladybug special episode or even a movie. Who knows what might review next, but I'll be glad to do it as long as you're willing to join. But until next time, I've been Deuce Diz Din, and I'm signing off. Bug out!